Good morning. I am here. Well, good morning for me. Uh, I know we're worldwide. I am here with guest of honor Claire Rousseau. I am so delighted to be able to do the uh, guest of honor interview. Claire, first, how are you? B, how was your move? And C, uh, congratulations on your Hugo nominations. Oh my God. Thank what a week. you. <laughs> what a week. What a week. It's been really up and down. So, um, as you can tell by my lovely background, I moved house yesterday, which is, a, you know, an experience when they told us that uh, it was the day it was happening. And I checked yeah. the calendar. I was like, oh. But uh, yeah, no, doing well. Managed to have some sleep, uh, oh, which good. is lovely. And uh, yeah, all good. The cat is doing well, which was frankly our main concern because we are yeah. Muppets for this cat. Um, and yeah, the Hugo nominations in the same week. I just, you know, it's amazing. Um, yeah, and I think you know, uh, I mean, I know you know how weird it feels, right? Um, oh, yeah, you did all this work a long time ago, and then you know, nominations come in, and you think, oh, really? I mean, oh, people were paying attention, that's nice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And you wonder if someone accidentally slipped and a whole bunch of people accidentally <laughs> slipped the same way, exactly the same way to, to put yeah. you on the ballot. Yeah. Mm, well, yeah. I mean, if you were in a novel ballot, that's less likely to happen. So. Maybe, but it's, it, mm -hmm. you still got to wonder if someone just like, you know, thought that they meant that other book with the similar title that you may not have heard of, but there's one out there, you're sure, because it couldn't be yeah, you. Yeah, 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 definitely, definitely. So, yeah. Um, no, I know what you mean, and it's been a rough year, you know, for everybody. Um, and so, you know, I got nominated for a channel that I, I'm now coming back to because we've moved and everything much better space for work-life balance and all of that but I haven't put out a video on that channel in a long time and so I was just like well it's the internet you know like people forget about what happened last Thursday so like they're not going to yeah. remember that I make videos because I haven't made them in six months because 2020 slash 2021 and it's just you know it's just hard um so yeah I mean I just I wasn't expecting it and I was just like, what, two? <laughs> yeah, the Conzeal and Fringe thing was pretty amazing. Congratulations. You guys worked hard on that. Yeah, we, I mean, we did. We did work hard on it and we did, you know, produce something that we were very proud of. But, you know, it, it's one of those things where, you know, when you get an idea and you're like, oh, wouldn't it be nice? I mean, it's 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 wild and, and it's not going to happen because it's like, you know, in a week's time or whatever, and you're, you're like, mm. or when you find, you know, when you, you think, oh, wouldn't it be nice if this one thing was set up this way or whatever? Um, and I mean, I was just thinking, wouldn't it be nice if, you know, the booktube, the booktube community and the Worldcon community were able to have a larger Venn diagram? Literally, that was like, oh, I wish more booktubers would be, you know, like, I wish more of the Worldcon community would know more different booktubers and all of that. And I was just like, but live streams, you know, part of my mm -hmm. job, part of my day job is to, to work on live streams. So it's just like, really, I really like the format and the medium. So I just, I don't know, I had an idea. And so I went to our mutual uh, friend, Alistair Stewart, who's a gem of a human being. And, um, you know, I told him about it because usually I told, usually I tell Alistair about some of my ideas and he's like, you might want to rein yourself in. I know you can do it, but also you need to sleep and eat a food. Um, and, you know, here's how you could do it in a more like sustainable way and take care of yourself. Um, in the case of Fringe, that lasted about two minutes and then he started on the planning <laughs> document. Uh, so that is uh, multiple Hugo Award uh, finalists, Alice Stewart, who is... Uh, yes, four. Of course, yeah, I mean, you know, um, it's really nice when, when you know, the, the good things come in for your friends who you know are the goodest eggs. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm really happy to see, uh, to see that uh, all those nominations. And also I'm really happy that um, 
Margaret Kenner, who is one of the co-hosts, uh, co-organizers of Fringe, uh, and also one of the co-owners of Escape Artists, um, had nominations for Escape Artists before, but this is her first name nomination for Fringe, mm -hmm. and I'm just like, I couldn't believe it, and I was just like, <laughs> I mean, why, why doesn't everybody want Marguerite to work on projects with them? She's great. I do. I just know that she's very busy. <laughs> I called and her Atlas what? the other day. I think she's Atlas because she just carries everything on her shoulders and she's unshakable. It's amazing. If someone could do it, you know, but it's funny because I was just reflecting the other day. Um, I did a little video to tell people, you know, hey, Booktube and mm -hmm. come to Flights of Foundry. I'm going to come back to Booktube soon, hopefully. Um, you know, I've got a film setting up those shelves, so that's that speak what you've content right there. But, um, I was mentioning the nominations in Fringe and all of that. And, um, it just struck me when I was doing that video, like how I was going to say how lucky I am. And it is true that I am that, you know, nothing happens without a huge amount of luck in any mm -hmm. industry and particularly anything creative, but you also put in the work and it's also what people think about you and what people have seen you do and your actions and your, you know, general record, I suppose. And I was just thinking to myself, like, for people like Alistair and Marguerite and everybody who has worked on Corn Zealand, you know, but in particular, of course, Adri, NC and uh, Cheryl, you know, like for everybody, to have come in and decided to work with me i'm just like well that if there's if that they, they, they can't there cannot be a greater you know um there can't be a greater sign that you know you're doing the kind of work that you want to be doing and you're doing it well um then have somebody uh, have you know the people who you admire like admire you right back and want to work with you and you know that that appreciation from your peers you know when you're a person who puts a lot of their worth on on what other people think about you for yeah for, for better or worse you know um at least one way to look at it a little bit healthier than just what is everybody think is no one's ever going to be you know you're not going to have everybody love everything that you do and that's completely fine <clears throat> But, you know, um, for the people who you admire and respect and aspire to be like and to, you know, work like and stuff, to, to, to have that opinion. I mean, I'm just mind blown, really. Yeah, it's a validating feeling. And, and sometimes when I get down on myself, what I try to do is I try to look through the eyes of people who have said kind things about me and wonder mm -hmm. what they see and try to do it that way. But I, I kind of jumped the gun just to introduce it a little better. This week, uh, Claire was announced to be a finalist for FanCast for her BookTube channel, which we will talk about in a moment, but also uh, Con Zealand Fringe, which was uh, alternative programming for different time zones when New mm. Worldcon was virtual and in New Zealand, was nominated for Best Related Work. and. I got to say that I am more and more excited about people looking at wider things in science fiction and considering it worthy of being recognized as moving the genre forward. It's not, I mean, Beowulf looks amazing. I haven't checked it out yet. And any work about Octavia Butler has got to be gold, mm -hmm. but seeing people recognize things beyond nonfiction books or, yeah, you know, it's like we've been recognizing um, uh, music in the uh, dramatic yeah. work category. Um, and it's just been, it, it's just exciting how people are looking at like Fiacon and Con Zealand Fringe mm. and stuff and seeing this is an important thing to the genre. It's moving the genre forward and it needs to be recognized. And that is so exciting to me. And video essays, you know, I mean, just the fact that um just because the, those categories you know i mean the hugos have evolved um over time plenty 
and and so it's, it's not new or weird to have the categories kind of shift a little bit but it is of course really exciting especially now with you know i mean i don't know now <laughs> i feel so old like <laughs> in fact over the course of my life the 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 massive acceleration in the evolution of technology which yeah it's not a new thing it's in fact it's been like 25 years and we're old yeah. but you know um that 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 aside um it's really exciting and also for me what i think about a lot is you know when the um when we first started to realize how big of an impact uh covid was going to have in terms of what we are able to do or not in in the medium term um and and the lockdowns and you know um people who are anxious slash prudent about <laughs> stuff like that we'll see <laughs> yeah it's not in fact going to be over by christmas or whatever um you know the idea I was so excited when uh, Con Zealand, um, the main convention, announced. Well, I mean, I wasn't excited because I really wanted to go to New Zealand. Yeah, and I was really me sad. Too. But I was, um, I really admired the way that they said really early on, actually, that they were going to go virtual. And I think that, I mean, you know, if you've ever done any kind of event planning, like they had to make a decision as early as possible because you know you've got to rebook all your guests and you've got so many changes and stuff but you know and i understand that it must have been so devastating for them after oh, yeah. you know what 10 years of bidding yeah. for that world con i mean i yeah, just I remember hearing about it in 2010 yeah 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 um but for me it's just like it's really really obvious to me that you can't replicate the experience of an in-person convention online and I don't think you should try because there are things that you are never going to recapture that obviously feel better in person, but then there's plenty that, you know, works better online. And and the fact that, you know, just looking at those points and thinking like, how can we, you know, and for me, one of those points was obviously Worldcon is a very specific thing. And when you buy a Worldcon ticket, you have all those things that go with it. Um, and, you know, they had this really fancy platform where you log in and all of that and, and it, it wasn't accessible to everybody, but it was, you know, um, they had, so they were able to have a really good setup that was, um, you know, robust and, and not just, just quote, a, a, a live stream, um, but like for the fact is that you can just do a free event that is a bunch of live streams and maybe it's not as fancy features but it's you know uh more accessible in certain ways and you can put it together in a week and a half <laughs> with your friends after having uh an idea that is you know too big for uh for your britches um so you know there's pros and cons and i think as devastating as it is to not be able to go to in-person cons for me anyway because i love them um we can do so many different things i'm just really excited about those i know i know you've been streaming i don't know have you been streaming uh games or like just chatting to camera or um i've been streaming actually all of i i do an ama stream i mm -hmm, stream my mm -hmm. podcast live and then i take the audio and put it on the yeah, feed yeah. and then i do game once a week but i'm thinking about upping it to twice a week mm -hmm. yeah yeah because the thing is for me like the idea of the idea of uh gaming with authors you know like do do a live stream you have an author they play their favorite game and you have a person who's like, like reading questions to them and asking them questions like an interview slash gaming session or like yeah. instead of a cafe class you do like a session of a game that's like a bunch of people you know a co-op game with a, a limited number of extra seats and you get people to like sign up i don't know i just i work in i work in um i work for a youtube channel i, I work for a gaming youtube channel full time that's my my day job um so you know um i just really want to bring all of the things that i like together and that's kind of how Fringe happened, really, because I was just like, hmm, 
but I know how to do live streams on YouTube very easily. People just need a webcam. And, you know, it's just, I, I just DM'd a bunch of people, um, as, as you know, and um, as mm -hmm. my friends often joke, my, my fandom superpower is that I know everybody because yeah. I just like to talk a lot. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I want to go back to your book tubing because I think it's, it's, mm. it's new to a lot of people. And actually what's really fun is, is I get to, you know, blatantly use this interview to answer a question somebody asked on my podcast mm. the other day. <laughs> it was very cool, which was, um, first I want you to explain like what you do on your channel and the goal of your channel. But then someone asked me what can authors do to get in touch with YouTubers to help promote themselves? Oh, and I'm yes. like, I have no idea, but I'm about to talk mm. to Claire. So I will talk to her about that. So um, first, let's talk about YouTube as, uh, or BookTuber as FanCast, as, mm. as what you do on your channel, and then um, how you help out authors. Yeah. Well, first thing, uh, first thing I'd like to do is give a massive shout out to my friend Rachel from Kalinati, who is uh, also nominated uh, for Best Fancast. She's also on the ballot. And I just like, I shrieked with joy when her name came on, because obviously, you know, you're nominated. You don't know who else is going to be there. And yes. I'm just really excited that there's another booktuber and that she is someone who I've been watching for the longest time and who is just like such a She's such an interesting critical, uh, she's such an interesting book critic, you know, uh, and she, she has good, she has good thinky thoughts about books. So I would recommend people check her out. Uh, but in general, booktube, what we do is, um, talk about books and no doubt about books. Uh, so I don't know specifically if, uh, people are wondering about like how you make videos or what the community is like. I'm not sure uh, kind of where you're interested in going specifically, but basically if it's related to books, you could probably make a video about it and people would be into it. It's a smaller community on YouTube. It's quite niche, but it is also uh, the people who love it really, really, really do love it. And it is, you know, um, it's just such, there's so many different booktubers focusing on so many different things. <clears throat> so you can find somebody who does stuff that you really, really like, who does fun editing on their videos or who, you know, I don't know, talks about book cover designs or somebody who's going to read like um, Rachel over at Kalinardi does uh, reading projects where she where she reads all of the winners of uh you know a particular award uh and then talks about it i think she's done the hugos already and now she's doing the otherwise and maybe the nebula um but you know i mean that that's just i would never do that <laughs> because i don't like to force you know because i, I never i can't make myself finish a book if i don't like it me too um so so i just no but I am, you know, planning to do things like turning these IKEA bookshelves into a thick built-in and then like, you know, decorating them and stuff like that. And you can have that as a piece, as a video or a series or whatever. And that's but it's very different. So there's such a variety. It's really, really exciting for that. So how would authors get in touch with you or any booktuber? Mm. Is it, it's, do you have a process for that specifically on your site or is there like a general etiquette to mm. approach no matter who you're talking to or what? Well, I think it kind of depends uh, on the type of publishing, right? So if you are doing, um, if you, if you're traditionally published, I think it would generally be the publicist reaching out rather than the author themselves, unless they are your friend. Uh, again, our mutual friend, Matt Wallace, uh, when his book was coming out, um, Savage Legion sent me a copy. It also was coming out in the US and not in the UK. So, you know, there's also that kind of thing. Um, and sent me a Hugo nominated six weeks as well. 
which was lovely. Um, and uh, so, you know, if you know the person, obviously they're your friend, you message them like you normally would. Uh, if you're doing more of a, you know, if, you, if you're doing more of a, I don't know, I guess cold calling for, for the sake of, um, of argument, we can call it that, um, just be professional. Um, depending on the booktuber and depending on the size of their platform and how much you, you know um, mail they receive about this kind of stuff, and depending on what they like to read as well, it may or may not be um, that they accept. They may have uh, you know restrictions on what they accept or not. They may say you know if you send me something unsolicited, I cannot guarantee that I'm going to view it. Um, I have a reviewing policy upon my website. Um, I haven't touched it in a long time, but it is there. Um, when I see people, for me, it, it's tricky because um, I know that I'm a person who can't make myself uh, finish books that I don't like and doesn't really, uh, and I find it really hard to follow a reading list. I mean, I think it is quite an ADHD thing, you know, that I'm just like, mm, I'm going to do what I want. And if I have a, a task list, I'm going to go like, no, <laughs> I'm a rebel. I will do that. Um, so because of that, I, I'm quite, I mean, I can tell you what you do to reach out to somebody else, but I, for me, I tend not to. Um, not to get that many things uh, from authors specifically, because it doesn't, it just doesn't really work. It doesn't really work with the way I function. But I would say, if you're traditionally published, get, get on, ask your publicist for sure to reach out to some booktubers. If you want to do a bit of research, find booktubers that you like, who review books that are like yours, and who like them and make them sound good to their audience. You know, make a little list, give it to your publicist. Um, if it is on NetGalley, make sure that your publicist is aware that booktube is a thing that needs to be added. I mean, most of them are, you know, like a good publicist will definitely be working with booktubers. Um, it, you know, it is also, there are plenty of booktubers who are just on the reviewing list for a certain publisher and just get all the things. Um, it is also important to remember that it isn't necessary. The goal isn't necessarily a review, right? Like if you send, I mean, obviously you can do, you can do uh, e-copies and stuff like that. But if you send a physical copy of a book to booktubers, it might be in a book hall and the person might say, Hey, here's this book. The premise sounds awesome. Look at the cover. It's so pretty. There might be people buying it off of that. You don't, you know, without you going into, you know, I mean, obviously if someone does a review and it's like 15 minute video about how great the book is, obviously more people might be interested in getting it. But it is also, um, and again, that's maybe, especially if you're uh, traditionally published and your publicist is able to send a bunch of arcs, but like the, the buzz that is built ahead of the book release by something like that um, is uh, is really, really good. If you are sending uh Oh, we're having some stuff. Uh... And if you're independent, you are yourself the person who's reaching out. Um, if you can give a time frame, not like, I'm, oh, Sorry, there was a choppiness, but I think you've caught up now. Oh, fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, I was just saying, obviously be professional. Don't assume that you're going to get a review. Don't assume that the only thing good that can happen is a review, because if you get, you know, somebody showing the physical book and it's something weird about the psychology of it all, right? If you show a physical book, rather than like a picture of the cover, like people like it more. And I'm not saying that you need to be spending your money uh, sending, you know, but obviously, you know, that helps. 
look at the size of the audience of the person um, and kind of assess relative to, like I was saying, it is quite, you know, sorry, it is quite a small niche by YouTube standards. So you're not going to find somebody with like a million or two million subs or whatever. But if you are looking at a booktuber who's, you know, um, under 5,000, 10,000, you know, if you look at the big milestones, you look at somebody who's over, I don't know, maybe like 20 or 30 or 50,000 subscribers or whatever, those people are not, I mean, I guess that what I'm saying is for booktube, that's a really high number of subscribers. And that means that they are getting a lot of, um, they are getting a lot of um, books marketed to them and pushed to them to show on their channel. Um, so maybe consider that get someone who's reviewing books that are like yours. That's really important. I get a lot of emails that are just like basically a copy paste email. And it's yeah. like, do you know when the last time is that I read like a uh, horror contemporary thriller? I just that's not my thing, you know. So much I like a lot you would of nonfiction. Hmm? Sorry, I get a lot of nonfiction. People yeah. want to send me nonfiction books and be on my show. I'm like, have you? Do you, do you know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, I like nonfiction, but like, then again, it's not, you know, it's not what I do most of the time. And exactly. it's like, you can give me, you can send me middle grade because I read it sometimes, but I can tell you, it takes a very, very special middle grade book for me to not end up reviewing it. Like, it was fun. But here is all the thing that my adult brain was thinking. I was so worried for this child. Where are the adults in this situation? You know, like, I... Yeah. I... There's this thing where you're like, if you're reading a certain, you know... Sometimes if you read a middle grade or a YA book and you think, I would have loved this as a kid, but, like, right now it's just, like, it's just not for me, right? Sometimes something's not for you and that's completely fine. Um, just, you know, basically think of it like a job application, I suppose, like do it properly tailored. Um, don't try to get the biggest book you are to, um, to get back to you because they have got contacts at all the publishers and they are getting like the most anticipated things like six months in advance. And they probably have their content planned several months in advance too. Maybe try and go for somebody whose numbers may not be as impressive, but is more likely to see the email and be like, uh, yes, now, please, because it's the right thing for them. And because maybe they um, have a bit more flexibility in like the schedule because they're not getting, you know, like the biggest titles. Um, I think that's about what I would say. Just make sure that your email, this is this is more of an email thing than a booktube thing, but like if you have, if you have a template email, for the love of God, take your template email from the Word document, put it in notepad, then add the name of the person, then put it in your email, it will all be the same font. Oh, <laughs> because if it's not all the same font, it's really obvious that it's a template. It does not feel nice. I know you use a template. Obviously, your time is valuable, but like you want to make sure that it doesn't read like, hello, Claire, I love <laughs> your channel and your vlog. If someone doesn't vlog, don't say vlogs. If someone, you know, if you say to somebody like, I love your reviews, and there's someone like me who's just like shouting about books, but not really doing like in-depth critical reviews. I have some critical thoughts. I'm just, uh, I'm just bad at doing like <laughs> one video about a single book, you know, it's just too, too little time. Um, just, yeah, just, just make sure that it reads like you 
had a little look at who this person is, I suppose. Mm -hmm. And you're not just blanket emailing. The same, in yeah. fact, not like a job application, like an agent search. Ah, yes. if you've done that because you're, you know, listening to I should be writing, so you're getting a lot of tips on that. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so now I, 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 this is your interview. I'm not going to get on my soapbox, but uh, I am old school, old school podcaster who, you know, when the word was created, it was delivering a file via subscription. Didn't yeah. matter whether it was audio or video or a yeah. PDF or whatever, which yeah. means you could have a video podcast. And then when it started to come into the Hugo mindset, they hemmed and hawed a lot and came up with the word fan cast. And you fought for a while to get booktubers acknowledged because at least in my world and my definition, you of course are doing a podcast. Because mm. pe people can subscribe on YouTube mm -hmm. to hear when you have a new file up. So um, you worked very hard and you got it. You, you got it recognized. You've been nominated before. You're nominated again. What I want to know is um, since starting that, trying to get booktubers acknowledged and now that you're nominated, how has being bigger in the eyes of genre, not just YouTube fans, how has that changed your show? That's really interesting. If at all. Now, I want to address a thing about your soapbox because you and I have talked about this before and, and we're, you know, um, I'm a language nerd as well. And, you know, um, if you look at the study of language in very broad strokes, uh, you've got people who are more or less prescriptive or descriptive about their study of language. And what I would say is that I understand what you're saying about the origin of the word podcast. Um, but I think the reason that I'm in favor of keeping fancast and not changing it to the best podcast award, for instance, I mean, the, this, the long description of the category says best audio or video podcast, right? And that's that's fine because that that's what those words specifically sure you know um that's the definition but i think um i think it's undeniable that if you say podcast to a person they think audio oh, and so no. we kind of have to work around that and, and that's really why i was just uh shouting so much about it on the internet because you know for the i was utterly utterly convinced that it wasn't that the Hugo voting audience really, really disliked booktube style content. It was just that they didn't really know it was there or that it belongs in the same category. Exactly. Um, so that's, you know, that's, that's the thing, you know, that I, um, and I mean, I'm really glad to have been vindicated on that because it would have been really sad otherwise. Um, yeah. Uh, for the how... record, I'm not suggesting changing it to no. fan cast. I'm just saying what no. you do. Uh, I'm saying what you do fit into the category, and I'm glad they yeah. finally recognize that. Yeah. No, no. I mean, I didn't think you said. I didn't think that's what you meant. But um, I suppose how it's changed. <clears throat> how it's changed what I do. Um, is I guess I've been talking more about um conventions and like more nerdy things in terms of like organizing conventions and stuff like that and that kind of goes also with you know organizing fringe um for me it again it is about just smashing things that i like together so saying you know conceal and fringe uh being on booktube and something that is around a world con um you know we we really want to introduce all of the booktube hosts to uh you know to the world con viewing i mean obviously conzeal and fringe was fully separate from the world con con zealand uh not affiliated and it was uh free so loads of people came to that who weren't necessarily world con members but um just increasing that crossover that's the kind of thing i've really been pushing to do um 
And I guess the, the biggest thing is that after years and years and years of thinking, wouldn't it be great, but I don't have time to do it. Um, I started, uh, I started a SFS news show, which like, I, it is my favorite thing to do on my channel. It is an incredible amount of work. Uh, the amount of time that it takes to produce one episode of genre-wise is wild. Um, so, so I now I do an SFF news show, which is a thing that is not like, you know, it's a little bit outside of the booktube remit, kind of, because we do, of course, talk about books a lot, but not, you know, um, I also talk about film and TV news and stuff like that. My... my what I always wanted for my channel and didn't really know how to do for the longest time was to be, you know, not a, not exclusively, you know, books, but just be like, like the main draw of it is not books, 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 books. It's books, but also science fiction and fantasy and fandom, you know, to have that as the brand identity, you know, like the recognizable <laughs> thing is sci-fi fantasy fandom um and so you know kind of expanding that t t t expanding the the channel to include more of that and so that's why i started doing genre wise and it was ridiculous amounts of work and and it was a a huge amount to do by myself um and i'm now collaborating with uh kj from lady business uh on it so uh she she's she's fantastic and also she's really organized which is great because i am i struggle <laughs> and so you know she, yeah we've talked about the things that work and the th we've talked about the things that we're each good at and not as great at or we don't like and we've split work in that way um and you know i guess you know, not to be too uh, afternoon special, but like for me, one of the biggest changes hasn't necessarily been, you know, being more recognized in, in walk on has been that um, I've been going to therapy and learning how to ask for help. So, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that is excellent because that's hard to do. It's so really hard. Is. It's so hard. Because um, originally I was going to do a keynote speech for this. Um, mm -hmm. And then I was going to move the day before it. And I did not have any brain cells left to do a writing an hour long suite. And I was just like, what am I going to talk about? Um, and, you know, I was petrified that they were going to be like, no, you can't not do the thing that you said you would do. <laughs> meanwhile, they were just like, yeah, obviously, obviously you keep changing your moving house. Um, and then I was incredibly, uh, I, I just jumped in my chair when I read their email and they said, Mur is going to do the interview um, because, you know, we are friends and I've been listening. I've, I've listened to your shows for a really, really long time. I don't listen to I Should Be Writing anymore because I'm not writing fiction anymore. Um, but like the first year I moved to London, I remember finding I Should Be Writing and it was just like, you know, for a long time, I thought when I publish a book, I'm going to go on Mer's show and it's <laughs> going to be cool. Um, so, you know, it does feel like an achievement. Uh, you know, I mean, obviously, guest of honor. I opened that email and I was like, yeah, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> but it uh, does also feel like a wonderful kind of, uh, com you know, close close circle, you know. Um, I'm not sure if that's the right idiom, but it does it does feel wonderfully like a kind of I don't know a thing that I thought one day I might do and then my priorities changed and what I wanted to do changed but I don't think the ambition behind what I wanted to do changed um and I put in some work and it is kind of yielding some results that I you know dreamed up when I was doing something else yeah, it's just nice I'm having a nice week <laughs> <laughs> you are having a nice week that's oh, excellent and very, God. very flattering. Thank you. Um, I was well, just excited to to be able to do it and that they would move the interview to a time where I was awake. So Mer, I got to have a lion the day after moving house. I I mean I would I would not have 
my computer was not set up at the time of that original interview. So, wow. Okay. Original. Excellent. There's getting a little choppy again. Um, I do want to say that if you are watching and would like to ask it's Claire a question, it then very, very uh, well. yes. Uh, if you want to, no. if you'd like to ask Claire a question, we are uh, hanging out in the Discord in Houdini A, and I will see it if anybody wants to come on and ask a question. We've got about uh, ten minutes left, I expect. Um, I could just talk to you all the time and I'm really trying hard to uh, keep it to interview questions and not like, hey, I haven't talked to you in forever. It's been great. Um, we should and, set up, so, a, we should uh, set up got, a game of Among Us or something. Like, we should. <laughs> no, I, I, would love, I wrote down to, to do writer interview Among Us because I love that idea. Um, people have gotten mm -hmm, really in, mm -hmm. into, like, I, I did a thing with world builders and mm. uh, Pat Rothfuss uh among us and then at another virtual con grade i can't remember which one it was they've kind of all meshed together but did another mm -hmm. uh among us with we didn't have enough authors show up so we did like fans and authors so uh see i mean that John would be Chu a perfect and, cafe clutch yeah. you know like yes you might get to murder john's cozy or he might <laughs> kill you <laughs> That's true. I'm just That's saying, true. I would. Or maybe I would you'll line up for that cafe clutch. Or maybe you'll just stand next to him and throw leaves out the airlock. You don't know. Yeah, 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 yeah. And there'll be a diamond in the leaves. Yeah. It's a good game. Oh, it's a good game. Uh, yeah, it is. It really is. Um, I might start a Stardew Valley farm and just bring people in to live in their own little houses and help me farm. Well, speaking of, uh, I don't know why I didn't think of that earlier when we started discussing games, but um, we have the best video game uh, Hugo this year as a special category. Oh my god! And I'm god. so excited about that and about the shortlist, uh, about the shortlist as well, because Hades is uh, my partner's uh, number one best game of last year. Um, so I, you know... I mean, first of all, I'm not a person who plays games that go fast. Mm -hmm. I like I like games where I can like pause and take my time. Mm -hmm. um, but I really want to try and do something like, especially since the thing is, voting closes in November for the yeah. Hugo's this year. Yeah. On the one hand, that's going to be stressful because we're going to be finalists for longer. A very long time. And yeah, by the way, congratulations on, uh, on your nomination, but also... Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, but, um, but also, we are Schrodinger's Hugo Award winner of this year for longer, so that's also nice. That's true, that's true. Um, and we have a lot more time to read the things if we want to. Every year I go like, I'm going to do a Hugo Award reading project series on the channel. And every year I'm just like, where, what is time? Um, mm -hmm. So this year it might actually happen. A group of us were chatting about the, um, we did a live stream on Rachel's channel, Kalinadi. Um, well, she hosted uh, and I popped in towards the end. I was running errands for the house move. Uh, um, so I couldn't really pop in by the end, but it was uh, just chatting about what the nominees were this year in general. Um, and um, apparently we're going to have a read along of, uh, of um, the um, new Beowulf translation. Wow, okay. Oh no, Claire, we're losing you again. You can... This is a uh, reason it might be, isn't it? Mm. Sorry. Anyway, it's called Bro. We'll okay. It up. Yes. Um, yeah, so we're going to do that. And I also want to do something with the games. So whether I'm going to be, look, some of them I'm going to be playing because they sound up my alley. 
I'm not going to be playing all of them because number one, I edited an entire series of my partner playing The Last of Us 2 and it's super grim and I do not want to play it to do it again. Yeah, that's um, one of those. I do not want to play it myself. Yeah. Um, it's a very interesting narrative. I don't think it is the best game of the year. Uh, I, I think they, they have so many thoughts. Like there was so many interesting things and then so many things that could have been interesting that didn't make any sense anyway i am not going to play that because i know what happens and it's also not my type of game but i yeah. i'd really like to go into you know uh if i'm not playing something do a bit of a discussion or something like that um so i'm i'm excited about playing animal crossing which i haven't before i'm excited about trying the version of hades where um you get more powerful every time you die which I yeah. think means I'm going to be a superstar. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm at eighty percent. Uh, I'm at eighty percent protection right now, which is the highest you can go. <laughs> okay. Damage resistance. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, John tells me there's a there's a there's a there's an easy mode, so I'm gonna try that. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I'm just really excited about being able to do that, and that's not typical BookTube content. But I, I just like the idea of kind of expanding. You know. Um, you know, booktube grows and changes because people think, oh, I'm going to do a thing that's not quite typical, but, you know, it appeals to them. And then all of those together just give us a bit of an evolution of the of the um, platform, medium, mm -hmm. niche. And it's wonderful. Um, you asked me a question and I don't remember. What it is. Well, I don't know, but I we just need to talk. Two people so with ADHD good. talking. <laughs> Oh God! Yeah, I know. I, if you want somebody, to, if you want somebody to talk about Blazefall, I am your girl. Just give me a call. Oh, you need to explain it to me because I don't understand. Yes. Oh, nobody does. It's very weird, and it gets oh, weirder every it's week. It's a feature, is it? What? It fall. is because that's nice. The I I'm not going to get on a huge tangent. I swear, but the game part of it is you make money by betting on these simulation baseball games, mm -hmm. and then at the end of the week you vote on various things like rules changes or strange things to happen in your uh yeah, on your fun. team and then they take basically they do a lottery and and then they mm. draw who wins what blessing etc and um it people didn't realize after the the first week which was essentially just a baseball sim that it was horror because what people oh. did was they opened, they voted to open the Forbidden Book, which brought in weather. The weather included solar eclipse. And what happens during a solar eclipse is a rogue umpire can incinerate one of your players and kill them dead. So, I mean, that uh, sounds, that sounds so weird. And that is a oh, thing yeah. that I love about, you know, like, isn't it just wonderful that we can say, Oh, this thing is so weird. I love it. I want to talk yes. about how it's the best thing of the year because it's so weird. Like, that is that is a, a thing that I really, really love about the Hugos. Um, mm -hmm. And it's, it's, yeah, I mean, I'm, I don't think I would have necessarily heard of that if not for the, you know, so I'm, I'm, I'm really excited to check all this stuff out. Um, yeah. And again, that's something where I might not be able to do a live stream because it's over a long period of time, but it could be a vlog of like every time I log into it and um, do a little bit of video and stuff like that so it's just like there's so many things uh to do and i'm very excited about doing all the things mm -hmm. as i always am because you know um funny brains eh but yeah it's just uh it's just a really really exciting time and um and um the the most important thing for us about this house move we've just had is that uh we got a place where we can each have an office. Oh, nice. And close the door at the end of the day, which is going to be fantastic for our mental health. And, um, you know, means that I have a place that I get to entirely decorate around making videos and editing mm -hmm. videos because I'm a video editor for my day job. So that's very exciting. That's excellent. I got to say one thing I'm jealous of that I mm. did not get the memo of, which is anybody who works with books at all seems to mm -hmm. have built a very attractive background with their bookshelves anybody 
Me, I got a green screen. And I know I could put a picture of somebody else's office. I might do Chuck Wendig's office. <gasps> yes, I'm going to have Chuck take a picture of his shed, and I'm just going to hey, use Mur. it as my background. Hey, hey Mur, you know how... Um... Hmm? You know how every uh, every episode of uh, Ditch Diggers, you're in a different room of uh, your uh, of yours and Matt's Ditch yes. Digger Palace. You should like you should put those recording live, and you both have the background of like somewhere random that's part of your Ooh. palace. Wow, hey. you're brilliant! This is why you do videos and get nominated for Hugo's. This is why. I. I mean, the thing is, the reason that it's important to, like, take care of yourself and ask for help and be sustainable when you do stuff like this is that, number one, idea, you know, you get more ideas when you're more rested and refreshed. Mm -hmm. And yes. you've had time to go back to the well, to use a phrase that you use a lot. Um, mm -hmm. But also, um, because if you want to do fancy editing shenanigans, they take a super long time. And if, like me, you are a person who thinks, well, you know, I mean, I can rush do this thing in 10 minutes. Therefore, that's how long it takes always and forever, even if it's completely uncomfortable to do it in that amount of time. And then you're not yeah. quite happy with the result. So if you're that kind of person, um, if you struggle with timings at all, I would say just, just, just write down how long it takes to do a thing and then like double or triple it. And that's how long time you should g give yourself because then you can experiment with funky editing shenanigans, for instance. Yeah. But yeah, I think we could do an entire other hour that was like how, how you make things whilst neurodivergent. Uh, yeah. yeah. How to HD, ADHD make things. Because I started the channel, by the way, because I thought writing a novel that's too long you know, I want to do something that's like a creative thing that I can, that I can like make one of the thing mm -hmm. and put it out. And then, you know, I can have a focus for that week or whatever. And then I put it out and it's still a body of work, but it's not like a novel where you have to work on it for like months and months and sometimes years before, mm -hmm. you know, it might go out into the world. Um, I thought it'd be less work than <laughs> writing fiction. It's just different work. Yeah, yeah, no, it's just different work. Because we want it to be good, you know. I think, I think uh, if if only if only I thought it was okay to just, you know, if if only I didn't want everything to be perfect all the time. Yeah. But yeah. yeah, you need to you need to get to take the nanowrimo approach to whatever you know. It's just like focus and uh and get the thing done yeah well claire i'm sad we're at the end of our hour because i just want to talk to you all day but uh you know the best thing is there's lots and lots of you mm. talking on youtube so people can get at least one uh part of that so mm -hmm. where can they find you uh, they can find my channel on booktube uh the channel name is claire russo which is my full name which i think you can see on your screen so this is a interesting french spelling of the name because i'm french um the it's a youtube.com slash channel slash claire russo all in one word um if you enjoy my uh rambling in an empty bookshelf um, I am going to do a bunch of other things uh, this weekend for Flights of Foundry. Actually, uh, not just now, but in the next slot after. So uh, right now it's uh, 3 p.m. my time and at 4 p.m. my time, uh, I'm doing a panel called All About Booktube. Uh, and so that's with uh, Caitlin of KDG and Emily of Emma Lloyd. Um, and uh, it's moderated by Nina Niskanen, who is lovely. Uh, so yeah, if you want to hear more things about booktube but i have like i have i have a number of, of things going on this weekend not at all too many <laughs> panels for 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 uh... <laughs> i just like doing panels a lot so when i agree to panels i'm like this will be fun and, exactly and it like, is oh, fun this, this three of them in a row you make some bad decisions <laughs> Well, I will cut this off so you can go get a glass of water and a stretch before your next mm -hmm. panel. 
Claire, it was wonderful talking to you. Wonderful catching up. And we need to do this offline Absolutely. soon. Yes. But uh, thank you, everybody watching. I hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend at Flights of Foundry. And um, I guess I'll sign off by hanging up this WebEx thing. I had not actually learned how to do this cleverly. So if I do it wrong, I apologize. <laughs> thank you, Claire. <laughs> thank you so much.